Every day, more than 20 million litres of gasoline are consumed around the world. To meet this demand, millions of barrels of crude oil must be processed. But how exactly is crude oil turned into gasoline? To find out, let's travel to the United States, the world's leading gasoline producer, and take a closer look at the process. The story of oil begins millions of years ago, when the remains of marine plants and animals accumulated on the bottoms of oceans and lakes. Over time, these remains were buried by layers of sediment and subjected to high temperatures and pressures, transforming into what we now know as crude oil. Throughout history, oil has had many uses. The Babylonians, for example, used asphalt to waterproof their buildings. However, the real revolution began in 1859 when Edwin Drake drilled the first commercial oil well in Pennsylvania, United States, marking the start of industrial oil production. In the early days, the primary product was kerosene, used for lighting before the invention of electric light. But with the rise of the automobile, the demand for a more accessible and efficient fuel led the industry to focus on gasoline production. This was no simple task, since turning crude oil into gasoline is a complex process. Crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons that must be refined to obtain the desired products. The growth of the oil industry throughout the 20th century was driven by the boom in automobile use and the discovery of large oil fields in places like the Middle East, Venezuela and the North Sea, establishing oil as a global economic powerhouse. However, the widespread use of gasoline has also brought consequences such as geopolitical conflicts, economic fluctuations and environmental issues. Today, the industry is searching for more sustainable alternatives, such as biofuels and electric vehicles. Even so, gasoline remains a key part of our daily lives. So what is the work behind producing millions of litres of gasoline? It all starts in large storage tanks that ensure a constant flow of crude oil. From there, powerful pumps, a complex network of valves and pipes, and a highly specialised team set the entire process in motion. The first step is to separate the oil into its components through distillation, a process similar to boiling water and capturing the condensed vapour. In refineries, massive distillation towers handle this task, separating the vapours at different levels. Imagine a giant tower. As the crude oil is heated, the lighter components evaporate and rise, while the heavier ones, such as lubricating oils and residues, remain at the bottom. As the vapour rises, it condenses at different levels. At the second level, light lubricating oils are collected. At the third level, fuel oil is obtained. At the fourth level, kerosene is extracted. At the fifth level, gasoline molecules condense into liquid form, while the lighter gases exit through the top. However, from a single barrel of crude oil, only about 18% is converted into gasoline, which is not enough to meet the demands of the millions of cars on the road. This is where the cracking process comes into play. Developed by scientists at the Standard Oil Company of Indiana, this method allows refiners to double the amount of gasoline extracted from each barrel of crude. It is like multiplying gasoline production, a crucial breakthrough for fueling vehicles around the world. Today, thanks to cracking, nearly an entire barrel of crude oil can be converted into gasoline, except for lubricating oils and diesel. This process not only increases the quantity of gasoline, but also improves its quality and efficiency, maximizing the use of natural resources. Cracking involves applying extremely high temperatures to the oil to break its molecules down into smaller, more useful ones, such as gasoline. Unlike distillation, this process requires much more heat. It takes place in massive tanks called crackers, which are capable of processing thousands of barrels of gas oil each day. But the gasoline industry does not stop at cracking alone. Another crucial step is polymerization, where small molecules, such as those in gas, are fused together to form larger, higher quality molecules. This process produces high octane gasoline, which is essential for optimal engine performance. There is also catalytic cracking, which works as follows. Gas oil is heated and mixed with a hot catalyst, which looks like tiny white beads. Together, they move into a chamber called the reactor, where the catalyst breaks down the heavy oil molecules producing gasoline. 
The new molecules, represented here in red, rise to the top. Over time, the catalyst becomes coated with a residue called coke, which reduces its effectiveness. To regenerate it, the catalyst is removed and taken to another chamber where the coke is burned off. The clean and hot catalyst is then reintroduced into the process, allowing the cycle to continue. All of this happens in massive facilities, some as tall as a 16-storey building. To put it in perspective, each of these cat crackers can produce enough gasoline in a single day to fuel an average driver for 1,000 years. To produce high-quality gasoline, two essential factors must be met – the right level of volatility and excellent resistance to detonation. Volatility, or the ability of a liquid to turn into vapour, is critical for optimal engine performance. The key lies in finding the perfect balance between different types of hydrocarbons. The lighter ones help the engine start quickly, while the heavier ones help warm up the engine, providing power and efficiency. Some molecules allow the engine to start instantly, but must be used carefully in summer to avoid problems. Others promote quick warm-up, while some ensure smooth and steady acceleration. Finally, certain components deliver the power and fuel efficiency we all look for. These molecules work together, like a perfectly coordinated team, to ensure the vehicle operates optimally, no matter the external conditions. In laboratories, researchers study how gasoline volatility affects engine performance. If the volatility is too low, the fuel does not vaporize properly, causing the engine to run inefficiently and consume more gasoline. That is why finding the right balance is key to ensuring efficient performance. Tests are conducted both in the lab and on the road, under a wide range of weather conditions, to ensure that gasoline performs well in any situation, whether in winter, in the heat of summer, on long trips or short drives. Refineries adjust gasoline volatility according to the season and region to maximise performance. Another key factor for an efficient engine is preventing uncontrolled detonation of the fuel, meaning an abrupt explosion. This phenomenon causes those annoying engine noises and reduces power. Imagine a piston being struck unexpectedly. That is what happens when gasoline detonates. However, if that force is smooth and controlled, the power is transferred more efficiently, moving the piston smoothly. This difference is crucial for proper engine operation. When gasoline is poorly refined, its molecules behave unpredictably. Upon ignition, the combustion becomes chaotic, causing a violent explosion that shakes the engine. In contrast, high-quality gasoline, with molecules designed to resist detonation, produces smooth and even combustion. This is especially important in modern engines. The right gasoline allows for fast acceleration, effortless hill climbing, and greater fuel economy. In refineries, Small amounts of tetraethyl lead are sometimes added to help prevent detonation and further improve performance. In these laboratories, exhaustive tests are conducted on different types of fuels to ensure that gasoline has the necessary resistance to detonation. This quality check is measured by the octane number. A common reference is iso-octane, a fuel with high resistance to detonation. Engines running on iso-octane operate smoothly and consistently while those using low-octane gasoline produce the familiar knocking sound caused by inefficient combustion. When a high-octane fuel is used, detonation is reduced to the point of disappearing completely. At this stage, the engineers have done their part, but technical advances and modern processes alone are not enough. Strict safety measures are also essential. Refineries subject their fuels to rigorous quality and safety tests. For example, the vapour pressure test ensures that gasoline does not cause vapour lock. Additional checks are conducted to ensure there are no harmful resins and that the gasoline remains stable during storage. Tests are also performed to protect against corrosive impurities. Every day, more than 1,000 tests are conducted in these large laboratories, which not only verify the quality of current products, but also work to research and develop better fuels for the future. Collaboration with the automotive industry is key to ensuring that there will always be a suitable type of gasoline for every vehicle designed. Thanks to these efforts, the production of high-quality fuels is guaranteed, both for today's engines and for those of tomorrow. To make this possible, massive installations such as the Superfractionator and other multi-billion dollar units are an integral part of the modern refineries 
operated by the industry's leading companies. Once the gasoline has been refined and is ready for use, a detailed distribution process begins to deliver it to service stations. First, it is transported from the refineries to large storage terminals through pipelines, which are underground pipes specifically designed to move large quantities of fuel safely and efficiently. From these terminals, the gasoline is loaded into tanker trucks that travel the highways to reach service stations. There, it is unloaded into underground tanks, ready for drivers to fill their vehicles with the necessary fuel. This distribution process is meticulously organised to ensure that gasoline arrives in perfect condition and is available at the right place and time. And that is the entire process behind the production of millions of litres of gasoline. What do you think of this process? I will be reading your comments. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you do not miss our next video.